Hey, friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to dig into some of the details of importing tracks into your Logic projects, how to place them along the timeline. Perhaps your collaborator or yourself did not export the tracks so that they all start from bar one. So now you have to place them along the timeline in the correct spots and also how to compile multiple takes into take folders that you can then comp, especially when it comes to groups of takes, like a drum kit where you have multiple overhead tracks, you have multiple snare tracks, and you want to be able to comp them together as a group. Importing seems like it should be a pretty cut and dry scenario, right? You could either open up the finder and then select all of your tracks and drag them right in, or you can go to file within Logic, and go down to import, and Though we have many of these different options from Logic Projects to Live Loops Grids, we can instead go to Audio File and then locate those files on our Mac. I'm a big fan of drag and drop, so we're just going to do that. Let's go to the Finder. I have a whole slew of drum tracks that I'm just going to drag right into my project. Now, Logic will take a moment. It's going to ask, you know, do you want to create new tracks or use existing tracks? We're going to create new tracks in our project. And now we'll see about five takes, I believe of each drum track. So we have what I like to call the bottom track, but it's really just like a kick beater side track. We also have floor tom, you know, rack tom, overhead takes, kick drum takes. Now I made it a point when I exported these different tracks to not export them as tracks, but as regions instead. So as it turns out, these shorter takes right here actually are not placed appropriately. They don't come in at bar one, they come in later in the performance. Now, I do want to point out when you export audio tracks in Logic, Logic will include any dead space before the actual performance. Like if we drag this bottom track to about bar eight, if we then select the track, go to file, go down to export, and then one track is audio file, we're going to export this audio file and I'll make sure to add it to the project browser and we'll give it a custom name. And we'll just call this dead space and I'll export this to my desktop. And really the point is, is we're going to export this, even though there's lots of space at the end, it will get chopped off or trimmed. And then if we go into the finder and then look for that dead space track and drag it right into the project, logic includes the dead space at the beginning of that audio region. But if we had just exported as a region, so go down to export and then one region is audio file. And we'll do the same thing, call this two, export. And now if we open up project browser, it appears that our name didn't stick, but that's fine. If we then eliminate this and drag this new performance in, Logic doesn't include that dead space. So so just keep in mind when you're exporting tracks out of Logic, you need to export them as audio tracks, not audio regions, if you want to include any space prior to the performance. So we have all these drum tracks. We need to place them at the appropriate spot along the timeline. Most DAWs are going to include some sort of timestamp information in the audio files upon export. This will help other DAWs identify where along the timeline these regions should actually be placed. If we select all our regions, right click, and then go down to move, we're going to move to the recorded position. Now watch this. When I click move to recorded position, Logic is going to move all of these regions exactly where they were originally along the timeline in the original project. And there we have it. Now everything's placed exactly where it should be. All my takes line up as they should, which means if you have a collaborator that sends you a bunch of audio files, and they failed to export all of their tracks as audio tracks, which means they didn't accommodate for any empty space prior to the actual performance. If their DAW includes timestamp metadata within the audio files, Logic should be able to easily place these audio regions along the timeline. Next, we need to compile take folders so we can edit all of these drum tracks together because we have groups of, you know, the floor tom, the kick, the overhead track. So each group instrument takes needs to have its own take folder. That's really simple. We're just going to select the tracks for the first five, all our bottom snare tracks or beater side kick tracks. And we'll right click on the regions or control click, go down to folder and then pack take folder. 
Okay, cool. So now we have it for the bottom track. We're going to repeat the process for each of the drum instrument groups. So right click or control click folder, and then pack take folder. And just to make it a little faster, I'm going to speed up the video and take care of all these take folders. Perfect. And now I'll just remove all these extra tracks from the old takes and delete those from the project. Perfect. So now we have these five groups of take folders and we collapse them all just by selecting all the regions and clicking the disclosure triangle to open or close all of them together. Now we're able to comp this group of drums together. But first we need to make sure that they're grouped together for editing. To do this, just gonna select all of our tracks, holding shift and just selecting, you know, either the bottom or the top track, holding shift and then clicking to select all of them. And then we can either go to the mixer, to the group field and create a new group or go up to mix and then create group. Group dialog in the inspector will pop open. So we'll call this drum and we'll wanna make sure to enable some settings. We wanna make sure to enable editing selection, which will allow us to comp all these take folders together as if they were one performance. And we wanna make sure to enable quantize lock audio in case we're gonna do any editing using flex time. Okay, let's try to comp these take folders as one performance. We should be good to go, I suspect anyways. So if I open up my bottom mic here, I'm gonna select just, you know, I'm gonna swipe across to see what we can accomplish. Okay, perfect. We can see that some edits have been made across the floor tom, the kick, but as it seems, the overhead track had no edit committed to it. So this is gonna be a problem. If our edits are not identical across a multi-mic performance, we're gonna run into problems of phase and also problems of performances not being identical. So we'll hear a slightly different performance in the overhead drum tracks as opposed to the individual drum tracks. What's the problem here? Well, if we select all of our take folders here, and I'm just gonna click one disclosure triangle to collapse them all. I'm not really sure why this happened, but I identified that even though I know all these drum tracks were recorded together, they should be the exact same length. As it turns out, one of the overhead tracks is a little longer than the rest of the drum performances. You know, if I open these up, the overhead seem to be slightly off. So what we need to do is, is I'm gonna set the playhead right along the timeline. I'm gonna select all my take folders, command T to split it playhead. And then I'm just gonna delete all these extra bits. Now I'm trying to select this extra bit at the beginning to delete, something kind of funky happened. But with our drum group on right now, Logic is accidentally selecting all of the take folders on all these tracks. So I'll go right over here to the groups in the inspector, deselect the on button, or you can use shift G to turn this off and on, groups active across the board. And now I'm gonna select, you know, this beginning little blip for each of these drum tracks. So we'll just select. Now check it out. Let's turn our drum group back on and let's now zoom out and let's make an edit across these drum tracks now and we'll even use the overhead track. And look at that. Now our edits are being applied across the board across all these drum tracks. It's super important that the takes in your take folders, number one, are in the same exact order. So if we take a look at the kick take folder, we wanna make sure that take five, take four, take three, take two, you know, it's reflected across the entire take folder. And we also need to make sure that the lengths of the takes are the same as well. Or you'll run into this situation where some take folders are being edited as you use quick swiping and some take folders are not being edited as a result. Now, right within Logic's project finder here, you can navigate to Logic projects and then import all of the project data from one project to another, including automation, plugins, you know, IO, sends. I have a whole video dedicated to that, which I'll link in this video. But my hope for this video was to cover some of those areas that can be problematic, which is ensuring that all of the tracks that you import are placed appropriately along the timeline, how to manage multiple takes and compile them into take folders so you can edit, and also how to ensure that your take folders actually apply the edits across all the take folders in a group. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new emails, videos, and posts to help you get the most you can. 
out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.